Welcome to day one of 12 Days of Doom. So today, we're going to tackle the question, what is the number of pairs being created containing tokens, USDC, and or wrapped ETH? So before we get into that, we want to give you a better understanding of what a pair is. Hopefully, you've looked at this graphic from the intro video. If not, I'm going to go over it again. There's a factory contract which allows you to create a pair of any two tokens. A pair for two tokens can only be created once, but different pairs can share different bases. So you can have a pair that's token A and token B, and also a pair that's token B and token C. If I want to find this, I'm just going to search like Uniswap V2 Factory. Etherscan actually shows up here, so I can see, all right, this is probably the contract address. In this case, I can see it's a Uniswap deployer, so I can trust that this probably is but normally you want to check this across the documentation as well. I can see that most people are calling create pair. And if I look at this transaction, I see a bunch of <laughs> random data that I might not understand. So the best way to understand this is to go to BlockSec and you can put in action hash and actually see, okay, this sender called create pair and that actually created a new contract. So this pair has a new contract address. And then there is an event emitted called pair created. So we have a high level overview of the flow. There's a function called a contract deployed, and then there's an event emitted. If I want to better understand how this function is used, I'm going to put this address into contract quick start dashboard and get a high level view of what are all the functions, what are the events and like input outputs, get an idea of how many times pair has been created. So in this case, it looks like it's 126,000 times. I can see how many pairs are created over time. It's like steady, even since 2020. And I actually see that, oh, most of the time, the pair is created by being called from the router. So now you have a better understanding of what factory and pairs are and how they relate to each other. Let's quickly talk about what tokens are before diving into the queries. So here we ask about what pairs created pertaining USDC and wrapped ETH. And USDC and wrapped ETH are ERC-20 tokens. And the way we can find out more about them is by going to either scan. And then if you type in USDC on the search bar, and then you can click into USDC that shows. So here we can see the, the max total supply of USDC and then the number of holders of USDC. And then we can also see the decimal for this particular token. And the reason that we have decimals for ERC-20 tokens because there's no concept of decimals on the blockchain. So you have this like big int where you decide like how many these are the decimals for your tokens. And then also in general for 20 tokens, they share functions such as transfer, mint, and burn. And then also you're wondering why we have wrapped ETH instead of just simple ETH. It's because we need to wrap wrap ETH that can nicely behave with all the other ERC-20 tokens for all the, the DAP that we're using. And then if you want to find out more about these token standards, you can go to Open Zeppelin to dive into more. Okay, so let's get into the queries now. Okay, so the question asks, the number of pairs created containing either USDC or wrapped ETH. As we were talking about, we need to find the Uniswap V2 tables pertaining to the pairs being created by the factory. So we go into the decoded projects, and then we can type Uniswap V2. And then we click into Uniswap V2 and we know we're looking for tables in factory. And then we're looking for an event table. So we filter for that. And then this is the only table pair created. So we can go by doing this. So we're selecting from the V2's factory event created table. And then, so what are we looking here? We're looking for the count of pairs being created. So we can just apply the count function. So we do count um, of the pair being created. Okay. And now we need to apply the filter functions. So here we can see the two tokens, token zero and token one, right? So these are like the two tokens existing in this pair. So we need to filter for the tokens either in USDC or in wrapped ETH. So how do we find out the address as we were just talking about? We can find out the address from Etherscan. So I'm just going to copy paste this over. So this is, I'm going to do a comment dash USDC address is this. And then we're going to also find the wrapped ETH address like that. And then clicking the copy on the other side. So wrapped ETH address is this. 
Awesome. So now we're ready to apply the filtering condition. Okay, so where token, because we care about either or, so we're going to apply either in this USDC address or in the wrapped ETH address. So that's for token zero. And then we're going to also look at the other side of this pair, so token one. And then we're basically interested in the same thing. Okay, cool. And then now we can click run. I just did command return. You can also click run. And we will find out. Okay, so this is the number of pairs pertaining, uh, containing either USDC or wrapped ETH because this is an OR condition here. And then we can also create a visualization of this particular number if we want to just make it prettier. So now we can see, hey, there's more than 100,000 pairs created containing either OR. Okay, so the next step is we can look at AND. So we want to look at the pair containing both USDC and wrapped ETH. So all we need to do is change the OR condition to the AND condition, and then we just run it again, and then we should be able to find out the results. Okay, cool. So we actually see there's only one pair in Uniswap V2 that it contains both USDC and wrapped ETH. But what if we want to find out more information about this particular pair, right? To We want to find out like for later analysis, we want to find out like, okay, the token symbol or maybe even like the decimals, what do we do? There's this table that we can join to find out information. So I'm gonna just back out to the spell site. Okay, so first off, I should have set this up better. Okay, so First off, let's go to the spells, and then here we can search for the token spell. So inside of the token spell, we can see an ERC-20. So in this ERC-20 uh, tokens table, we can find out the decimals, the contract address, and the symbols for it. So later on, when we even if we are analyzing a couple different pairs, we're able to make sense of the, the raw address. So that's what we are going to do. We're going to do left join on this table so we're actually gonna do two left joins because we have two tokens we have token zero and token one both so we want to be able to like, make sense of each of these tokens so we're gonna join on this table twice so we're gonna call it t0 for the first one and then for the second one we are going to call it t1 okay and then what are we joining on okay so here is the contract address for this particular token so we're gonna do t0 dot contract address, right? What are we joined with? We care about the piece, the token zero, right? So we're doing this. And then let's just create an alias for this pair created table. So it's easier to refer to the columns. So we're going to do p.tokens. So similarly, on the second join for the ERC20 token table, we're going to do the same thing pretty much. And then p.token. One. Okay, cool. So now we have set up the, the joints. We can find a little bit more information out. Okay, I'm actually gonna, I forgot a column. So I'm gonna quickly go back to here to find the time column for the factory. Okay, so here I'm interested in the time of this. So I'm gonna do the event block time. So I'm gonna call it p dot dot last time. And then here, I'm gonna do this as the pair address, right? Okay, and then we can do the token itself, token zero, and then we can make it pretty by telling it the symbol of this particular token, right? And then we can name it as T0 symbol. And then we can do p.token1. So basically doing the same thing, but for the second token, one underscore symbol. Okay, so now we can make sense of it. Actually, there's one more thing that we need to do because for the ERC20 token table, it's it's a cross chain. So just to be safe, we should try to eliminate it to only the Ethereum chain, right? Just to be safe so we don't get like the address records that we don't want. Blockchain. So we're here, like we're trying to filter in for blockchain of the token that's only Ethereum. And then I'm gonna run it quickly to see. Okay, so here you can see, okay, so this is the um, 
the token pair, right? In this token pair, the pair address is this, and what token does it pertain? The pair pertains USDC and wrapped ETH in this pair, and it was created in 2020 on May 5th. And that is the answer to our question today. So thank you, Jackie, for giving us that wonderful walkthrough. If you want to take this query further, you should try and figure out which token has been in more created pairs over the last year. This requires you to use a group by, and you could either group by and look at the most recent month, or you could look at a full time series chart and use our visualizations. Tomorrow, we'll be back with the next question, looking at how many swaps are happening per week and what are the total volume of these swaps for the ETH USDC pair. Reminder, we have office hours at 2 p.m. every day and can't wait to see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you at the office hour or tomorrow. Bye.